Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. Now, we've not done this for a while, but we're doing another episode of Crime and Nourishment. And today on the show, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Brett Brock. Hello, Say, everybody. I'll wait for the pl- applause to dissipate. Yeah, yeah. They- <laughs> What's up? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries, man. How you doing? Good, good. How about, how about you? How are things on your end? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Just uh, really fucking warm because we're not designed for warm weather in this stupid fucking cold, rainy country. And uh, yeah, I just I, I, I'd like five minutes of my life where my testicles aren't stuck to my thigh. That would be oh, yeah. fucking lovely. Oh, my balls have been on my shoes since June. Oh, it's just so hard. I don't know how you I mean, I, I don't mind it when I'm in holiday mode. Like if I go over to the states, or you know, I go to like Spain or something, it's like it's for I'm on holiday. It's supposed to be disgusting, but like in my own house, in my just normal clothes, this is ah fucking oh, yeah. heat. My my air conditioner is working overtime, just you know, with the heat exchanger, just getting rid of yeah. the humidity out of the house. And so when it's already doing that, so it's just still hot in the house. It's just not yeah. humid inside the house. And there goes those lights. They just finally warmed up. Yeah. No, it's the hum- the humidity is what gets me as well because you never get dry heat here ever. It's always like fucking seventy five percent fucking humidity. So you just like, yeah. just and being a big fat fuck as well doesn't help because you know it's just like wearing a fucking like you know fucking Arctic survival suit inside your clothes. It's man, there. It's so hot and humid in the southeast. I stay drunk every summer, and I've kind of realized that. What I remember about the summer months yeah. is just varying levels of sunburn. It's like, okay, I, I, I got sunburned that first week in June because I stayed out I don't even months. I don't even get to go out in it because I'm like working in front of my computer fucking half eight till five. And then it's like, well, then I've got to do a bit of editing and then I've got to do this and then, you know, and before you know it, the fucking sun's fucked off. So I don't even get to see the sun. I just get to feel it from inside. It seems like as we get older, you know, like when we were kids, the days would last forever. But now as we get older, it's like, I'll drink a a pot of coffee, I'll take a dump, and now it's six o'clock. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and then then that week's over, then that month's over, and then we're dead. Thank God. It's over. Everyone's like, I want to live forever. It's like, yeah, I'd want to live forever if life was all right. (laughs) Could you imagine this forever? No, thank you. I'm good. (laughs) This is the exact right amount of this. Uh, right. Um, um, another Fat Guy Cooks is a show that I do on YouTube, as I think you may be aware. And it's lovely. It's it's my Sunday, after I do my Twitch stream on Sunday mornings, yeah. I immediately roll into your YouTube, Another Fat Guy Cooks uh, video. And that's my, that's my Sunday routine. And I, I'm all, I've been subscribed since day one. And so I always like and comment. Well, thank you. And everybody should. Otherwise, they're bad people and bad things will happen to you. Like heat and humidity and swamp ass. And, and murder and other awful things. You, you'll die. If you don't like and comment on my videos, you'll probably die sooner than you normally would. Isn't that in, right, Brad? An insult to injury, dying with a scratchy, itchy butt. Ugh. Oh, just like that you can't get to. That it's like, yeah. right, because you've got a bit of a bad back and you can't quite... Get around to it. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, and while you're liking, I mean, we'll do this all at the end as well, but while you're liking and commenting on my uh, on my YouTube video, then you should go over to Twitch and go and see Brett Brock's Twitch channel and uh, subscribe to that as well and watch him draw really cool shit all the time. So um, I've brought you on here because uh, I do a segment on this show where I've had a few people on. I've had Doug on, we've had Andres and Brett and and whatever. All the all, all the sort of you know lower rungs of people. But now finally we have you. So what what we do is we we ask what your uh, what your crime would be to get you on death row, and then what your meal would be, and uh, I I make it, and then we'll we'll come back in a few days, and I'll show you what I've made, and. We'll all be amazed at what a fantastic fat guy I am. <laughs> and also the cooking. Simple concept. I love it. Yeah. So what, what is it that has gotten you onto death row, Mr. Brat Brock? What did so, you do? 
Triple homicide. Triple homicide. Okay. So what had happened was uh, pissed off uh, at this country about the uh, ever expanding uh, um, economic Tent- uh, tentacles of oppression. Well, the income inequality in this country, and I've got pissed off, and I've chosen mayhem. So I've scoped out billionaires' regal estates. I uh, collect intel on what time they leave, what time they get back. Do they leave on the weekends? Are they gone all weekend? And while they're gone, I break into their house. I take upper deckers in their toilets. I take upper deckers in their, uh, their kitchen garbage disposal, and I turn it on, and then I use their vast, sprawling living room walls as graffiti to make art, and that kind of stuff. And then before I leave, I turn off all the circuit breakers because they won't know what's happening. And besides, it's just awful to come home to a house and the light switches don't work. Mm-hmm. That's annoying. Yeah, that's really annoying. And I'll get away with it for a while, except one night, uh, a billionaire family and their brat kid go out to the movies. The brat kid gets scared. They come home early, catch me in the middle of it. Well, I got to shoot my way out because, you know, if you're going to commit mayhem, you got to be strapped. And uh, so I shoot all of them and I thus prevent the Batman origin story. (laughs) So that way, when uh, you're out in a bad neighborhood and you're buying a, uh, a quarter ounce of weed, you don't have to worry about Batman swinging out and breaking your arm. You're hey, welcome. So, okay, we, we, we've murdered three billionaires, thus solving nothing. What are we having for our last meal? So last meals are a myth because cops, local, state, federal governments always lie. Yeah. Lying, lying about some dead dude who had surf and turf last night is a layup. He's not going to fucking argue. Yeah, produce the dead guy who had yeah. his last meal. Let's ask him. No, so it's, it's a myth. So when he first asked me about that, I thought, okay, paya. And if, they, if they're going to zap me, then uh, they're going to have to at least cough up the money for saffron. Okay. And, uh, and I thought, nah, I'm not going to do that to Amy. And uh, so give me a minute. I'll, I'll walk it. And I thought, okay, a, sea, a seafood medley. So I'll have lobster and crab legs and uh, some kind of spicy, greasy duck and a fettuccine Alfredo sauce with some clams and scallops and probably a dozen oysters on the half shell. And the reason for that is uh, the next morning I'll have diarrhea and nothing mm-hmm. makes me smile more than the thought of some state employee mopping up shit after they zap me with those sparky and just <laughs> release my back. I, I just imagine it just coming out of like every orifice. <laughs> just, it's just coming out your eyes and your ears. It's just shit everywhere. All that salt water and seafood. Yeah. Oh, radish. It was, a, it was like, um, I don't know if you uh, know, you know, Brian Lewis Saunders, the, yeah. um, the, his, he, 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 was, he was on the show and he had a, a story about when he was in jail, how people used to shit into crisp packets and yeah. then put them like at the front of people's cells and then stomp on them. Basically, you're saying you want to become a human shit crisp packet. <laughs> and just spray everybody. But so... Uh... I, 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 cho- I went against that as well because okay. we're, uh, we're buds, man. I, I'm not going to have you go out to the fish market and drop two hundred dollars on all this fresh seafood. Uh, you wouldn't be the first. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So I settled <laughs> on comfort food. Okay. And, uh, and the comfort food I settled on, uh, I have not seen you make it before. Okay. So in kind of two parts, so kind of the appetizers and then uh, entree, but. Uh, and, you know, I'll let you pick and choose, but okay. big fried chicken okay. gizzards with croquetin. Yeah, with what? With croquetin. It, it, uh, so croquetin is a, it's like, think of a, a deep fried uh, mashed potato roll with a crust around it in Germany and then in, in the Netherlands. Oh, it's oh like potato croquettes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got, yeah. I got and, 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 and I think it's bitter ballin in, in the Netherlands, I think. Yep. So, so yeah, deep fried chicken gives with croquetin and then uh, uh, crawfish etouffee. If you have access to crawfish, and if not, well, I'll give you something else. Well, well, I'll, if, if not, I'll substitute it for something similar that I, I can get. So, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. Okay, so so deep fried chicken gizzards, um, potato croquettes, like the little, little, little guys. They're almost like tater tots, right? Kind of, they're, but they're better than tater tots. Yeah. And, yeah. and the reason I say that, there's a place uh, in Simbach, Germany, I had the 
best croquette in my life. It was okay. just like these deep fried, crispy, crunchy outside rolls that was so soft and those mashed potatoes inside. They had a little onion in there. It was so good. And I've never, that's the best croquette I've ever had in my life. Okay, and cool. That, uh, it's in, I don't know, I, I've never been, found anything that could come close to that one, but I, who, who wouldn't love a deep fried well, potato? I mean, I'm, I'm not, well, I mean, what I tend to do with everything that I, I cook on the show is I'll go and Google it. I'll find two or three recipes. I'll fuck around in my kitchen inside here and I'll make it once or twice. And then I'll just tend to come up with my own recipe or my own sort of play on it and whatever. So we'll, we'll come up with our own thing, but it'll, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely get it as close as we can. That sounds very really fucking good as well. And as far as the etouffee goes, a lot of the stuff, you know, you cook a lot and I just assume that you've got a well stocked. Oh yeah. Pantry. So other than the crawfish, you've probably got everything on hand. Yeah, you know, etouffee. Maybe... Remind, remind me what etouffee is. It's, uh, it, it, I don't want to say soup, but just think of a uh, heavy cream and uh, a lot of celery and, and stuff okay. like that. And it's, uh, it could, depending on how it's made, like if you, if you bake it, like in cast iron, it could kind of become a gratin. But uh, it's just really good to mix around with rice. That kind okay. of stuff, but it's uh, you know, because I think you made gumbo in one I of did. your early, yeah one of my early really early episodes yeah so uh yeah think that think about the room think about that stuff so okay. I, I, I try to I, I try to think about you and your work and what you've done before and have not done before that's see I appreciate that because fucking nobody else does that they're like. I want pizza. And it's like, dude, I did pizza like two fucking episodes ago. Well, I, well, then I don't know. It's like, well, for fucks, go away and think again. Right. So we've got, we got all that out of the way. Now, um, obviously, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to fucking wax too much about this because everybody who knows me probably knows you. But just give us a little bit of rundown on, um, on, on what you do for a living and like, um, and sort of how you keeping yourself, how you keeping yourself busy. Yeah. Well, I retired from the, uh, uh, the air force. It was specific to the air national guard, but, uh, that kept me busy for a long time. Before that I was an art director on music row. And when I retired from there, um, then, um, trying to abbreviate all this. So now I'm trying to get back into art and, uh, I should have gotten on Twitch in 2020, but I, instead I got back, I got on it in December of last year, so December of 2021. And uh, my, my intent was to do my Twitch streams on one day, take the next day off to download the raw footage, to edit and to post it on YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a lot of work. And I did not know. It sucks. It sucks. It's like, it's, I understand why editors are their own unique people now. And, and I've got nothing but respect for them, what they do. And it's, it sucks. It's a different mindset. But and you've it's like ready. there's two, there's two, there's two different parts to it. There's, there's editing somebody else, which just sucks. And then there's editing yourself, which just sucks to the nth degree so much fucking more. Because you just see every little, oh, I just breathed through my mouth there. Oh, I just scratched weird. Oh, I just picked my fucking nose. Why did I even say that? That was fucking stupid. I hope this big fat guy dies in this episode. And, and if you're like me, I hate my voice. Yeah. So now I've got to record an intro to get to the video. And then I have to do a voiceover on top of that. And I, I take my, my mic and I try to get it away from my, my face hole. And to alleviate the, uh, the, the, the lip smacking or the breathing, that kind of crap. And it still picks it up. And I'm like, yeah. oh, God, that's disgusting. Background and music. Background music gets rid of that. That's the yeah. only way I managed to do it. Because I have this thing where when I'm nervous or when I'm, stre or when I'm sort of in the middle of doing something, I just entirely stop breathing through my fucking nose. And I just like, <sighs> and you can just hear it constantly on the fucking mic drives me insane and i'm like they're trying to micro edit individual grunts out of videos and it's ah oh man that way madness lies um what well, tell me a little bit more about the um 
the fucking Air Force shit. I don't, I, fill, in, fill in some stuff about that. What, what did you actually, what were you involved with? So uh, I, I joined the Tennessee Air National Guard in 1994. And I, okay. joined, and I joined the Air National Guard with the intent of doing exactly that. One week in a month, two weeks a year. You know, I took a, because I had to have money for college. And while I was in college, that was one part job. And I had three other, can't even put my fingers up, three other part-time jobs on top of that while being a full-time student. And um, so I took a semester off, do my basic training, tech school, all that. Came back because uh, I didn't want any debt either. I wanted my college tuition paid for. Yeah. Uh, and I thought one week in a month, two weeks a year, go through school, full-time student, maintain multiple part-time jobs, graduate, no debt. And we'll get out, you know, we'll six years and I'm done with this military crap. Well, I thought this is a pretty sweet gig. You know, in the late nineties, it took me to Germany. We're doing missions in and out of Bosnia and Kosovo, that kind of thing. But I thought, yeah, it's not too bad. And I never signed up to be some warrior hero bullshit. It was strictly financial. And uh, then 9-11 happened after I signed up for another six years. And uh, overnight, uh, I went from, you know, a part-time G.I. Joe person that cosplays one week in a month, two weeks a year, yeah. to full-time. And so from 2003 to 2008, I was in and out of the Middle East, and six months of uh, counter drug war operations, Central South America, uh, humanitarian aid missions, Bosnia, Kosovo, all throughout Africa, just all over. And then we became a schoolhouse in 2008, 2012. So we got to work with a lot of uh, international students as well as DOD students. So there was no, uh, you know, no hardcore badass stuff at that point. But um, so you, and you managed to come out of it relatively sort of mentally unscathed. Well, there was some, you know, I'll be honest about it. I, you know, I mean, you if you, obviously, you don't want to talk about it, no, I'll talk about. I mean, there was, you know, there's like the last three and a half years I can't talk about because of NDAs, and I can't talk about it to I think 2037. But there's a lot of stuff you get shot at every day. You're not built for that. You're not ready for that. You're not used to seeing dead people in the back of your plane and you're flying around. You're not, you know, people coughing up blood on you, that kind of stuff, holding the guy's guts in after the, specifically the Baghdad, the UN bombing in Baghdad at two, in 2004, I think. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of shit. Um, so, and it was every day of that just about, and you're not ready for that. So, yeah, I had some PTSD, couldn't hold a relationship, just, you know, bouts of rage, that kind of stuff popping up. And you couldn't talk about it because if you talk to anybody, then they kick you off flying status. Well, that gets deep into your pocket. And that can't happen. You've got a mortgage to pay. You've got bills to pay. you got to keep your mouth shut. That's so fucking insane. Yeah. No, we, I mean, the, the thing that I, I remember quite a lot of was um, – a lot of people with like the uh, the Iraq um, Gulf War syndrome and shit from from in, that's that was a big thing here because a lot of people not a little bit older than me but you know there was a lot of people who were coming back from like Iraq one who um, who were absolutely fucking destroyed as humans from you know the shit that they'd fucking inject them with because of the chemical weapons and you know all that kind of thing and it just like absolutely wiped out a generation of dudes and just turned them into fucking cripples basically it was fucking uh Warm, no, no one gave no one gave a shit no you know no, no one helped no one fucking there was no one for them to talk to they would just they'd just go to bars and beat up beat, you know beat people up and go to jail and that's exactly you know not the bar fight stuff really but just yeah you and your flight crew buddies you just meet up at somebody's house you know try not to get a dui somewhere or and just get hammered every night yeah. and it was uh and it took several years of being removed from that, that we finally go, hey, man, did, was your divorce because you were snapping suddenly? And then th- that started the dialogue, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I would wake up, like, I got to wake up in the middle of the night, butt naked, not knowing where I am, and cl- clearing my house with my pistol, going, where am I, kind of deal. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's a real thing, and you know, people don't talk about it. Yeah. No, but you, you should normalize. I mean, it should be normal to talk about shit like that. I mean, it should it really should be. be. Yeah, it really should. I mean, I uh, my my granddad was um, 
uh, in Burma, World War World War Two. Um, you know, fucking fighting the the Japanese in fucking foxholes and shit. And like he would, he'd say nothing. He would literally wouldn't say fucking two words about it. Like you know, it, and it completely closed off about it. And then literally died having never spoken and literally not just about that but he'd not speak about anything i mean he, he, he was just a fucking complete closed book about it and it's yeah. what do you do for those people my, my grandpa was the same way you know he uh he drove a fuel tank uh for Patton. so you know the first thing that uh the germans did was try to strafe those those fuel tanks and take them out so he was constantly diving for foxholes and ditches and that kind of stuff and yeah. He saw a lot of crap. Like he'd get drunk and slip up and give me some stories that were just terrifying. And then, you know, my dad was in both Korea and Vietnam and oh, fuck. died. I mean, died from died from cancer, but it was complications of Agent Orange. You know, it's they, they just they were a different breed, man. They didn't talk about anything. And that's probably why they beat their kids. Well, this is it. Yeah, this is it. This is why we have a generation of fucking boomers who don't really give a fuck about anything. It's just, oh, if the world just fucking blows up or, you know, global warming kills everybody, it wasn't as bad as Nam. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine to suck it up. Yeah. I'm getting off work at about three. I'm going to come home and take my day out on you. <laughs> right, so if I remember correctly... Just to reiterate, I am making fried chicken gizzards. I am making German uh, potato croquettes or croquetten. And I am making crawfish eto te 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 hey fey. Etouffee. that's the one. <laughs> all, all, all comfort food. Crawfish etouffee. So, um, yeah, perfect. I will um, be back with you on Saturday, hopefully. I hopefully well, I'll be in the studio then and I'll be just finishing up and I'll time it to bring you in just as I'm sort of plating up and you know getting everything ready and then we'll uh, we'll talk again then and uh, we'll see how well I did. I, I know you'll do great and I'll be sure to have a cooler full of beer. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. I'm your fat guy, Andy Baker, and today we are carrying on the crime and nourishment episode with our good friend, Brett Brock. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to make today is going to be crawfish etouffee. Now, you can't really get crawfish here in the UK, but you can get something very similar called Langoustines, which are basically crawfish, but they're English ones. So uh, we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using these guys now. Etouffee, which I recently learned, is basically just like a play on gumbo. So um, we're going to start putting that together now. First thing that you always do in gumbo is get your roux going. So let's do that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this in our ninja foodie, which you should have a good view of now. Um, hopefully, hi. Uh, so we're going to stick this on to sear saute for now. Right, so I'll, I would do this in a pan, but um, I need to use this for deep frying in a bit. So this this will do just fine. So I need about two tablespoons of butter, which is, yeah, I'll do. And about two tablespoons of oil. Just gonna let that all melt up nicely. Now you need to kind of do this all fairly fluidly, so I'm kind of going to talk as I do. Because um, if you fuck around too much, you can burn your roux, which you know you don't want to do. It's a pain in the ass. And then to add to this, we need roughly about three tablespoons of flour, which we're just going to eyeball. One. About that. And then we're just going to keep mixing this until it makes our roux. Now, as you can see, that is now a very light roux. We need to just keep cooking this down slowly while stirring and be careful not to burn it until it gets to a nice dark brown caramelly colour. And all this is doing is basically cooking the flour in the butter and the oil and this will add the thickness to the stew, soup, whatever you want to call this. 
This can take about between five and 10 minutes. I'm just gonna turn the temperature down to medium now because it's starting to take on some color and we don't want to burn it. And while that's going, we're gonna need about half a cup each of bell peppers, celery, and onion. That is now approaching pretty much the right temperature. So I'm just gonna turn that off for a second while I chop my veg. I don't wanna burn this room. So I'm just gonna pop this guy out. So we're gonna throw our room back on the heat. Stick it back on medium. And we're gonna add our vegetables. Okay, we're just gonna cook those through until they start to soften nicely. Okay, we're gonna need a couple of big cloves of garlic. Stick those in there, get them ready. Okay, like that. Okay, that's been going for about 10 minutes and is starting to soften nicely, smelling really good. So we're just gonna throw in two big cloves of garlic. Nice big pull of thyme. Yeah. And a couple of bay leaves. <clears throat> now we've just let those spices just wake up a little bit. We're gonna throw in a tin of tomatoes. And we'll just smash these up once they're in there. Couple of good splashes of Worcestershire sauce. You want some Creole seasoning? I'm going to use um, Tony Chasseries, which is amazing. I use it on like everything. A good old whack of that in there. Also, want to throw in some smoked paprika. Now uh, we're going to add some stock. I've got kind of uh, fresh chicken stock here, which looks a lot like beer, which, you know, if you're not careful, you end up accidentally drinking out of the fridge like it's beer. Not that I've ever done that. About two cups, which is, I think, just what's in here. Okay, and we're just gonna let that come up to a boil. While we're letting that come up to a boil, we're going to prepare our langoustines. Our little crawdads. Hi. So I'm assuming you just take the head off and then pull apart the middle. And the vein should come out, as you can see. And then we have our little crawdad. So, uh, we'll just use a little pot. Put those in there for now. All right, let's keep doing this. What you can do as well, if you wanna make some stock for in the future, use all this shell and everything that you're not using and boil it for a while. And that'll make you some nice stock for the next one. Right, from that, we got this. Okay, so we're gonna throw our crawfish into our etouffee. And that is pretty much done. We're just gonna let that chill out now on low until we're ready to, uh, to serve up. Next food. 
Okay, so part two of making gross things look and taste tasty. We are now going to make southern fried chicken gizzards or just fried chicken gizzards. Now, if you don't know, a chicken gizzard is the part of the chicken that it swallows stones and they go in the, in the gizzard and then when it eats food, the gizzard contracts and that grinds up the food with the stones and that's how they digest seeds and stuff. So we're gonna eat that bit. Now, these have been pre-cleaned, thank fuck, because I couldn't be bothered to do that. Um, but if you're getting fresh chicken gizzards that haven't been pre-cleaned, you need to wash all the stones out of them and all the shit out of them and stuff and it's a pain in the ass. <clears throat> Fortunately, I don't have to do that. So should we have a look at some chicken gizzards? Okay, so that is a bowl of chicken gizzards. This is the gizzard. They look like little lungs. Like little mini lungs. We're not going to use all of that. But that's what they look like. Right, so we're just waiting for some water to boil. While we do that, we're just going to get our dredge ready. So we're just going to need some flour. Black pepper, a load of salt, garlic granules, some more chasseries, Tony chasseries, some onion granules, and then we're just going to combine all of that together. Okay, so with our chicken gizzards, what we're going to do is, as you can see, this is what they look like pre done. Now, all we need to do is get some buttermilk or some milk and a little bit of vinegar and let these sit overnight. So I've got some of these that I have previously prepared that are sort of ready to go that I'm gonna bring back in. But yeah, so just bang them in some buttermilk, leave them to soak over overnight. What that does is lets the enzymes in the milk buttermilk break down the chicken, makes it a little bit more tender and makes, makes them a bit easier because they're a little bit tough. So makes them a little bit easier to chew. So we'll go and get the ones that, uh, that we've prepared. Okay, so we need to get some oil going. Let's make it hotter in here because it clearly isn't fucking hot enough. Ugh. I don't know if you can see on this, but the milk is like really curdled and got all chunky. Kind of like if you sort of make yourself an Irish car bomb. You know, like Guinness and Baileys and it just curdles and looks disgusting. Uh, we also need a little bowl with a couple of eggs. We've also got the uh, potato croquette as well, but what I've done with that is it's so fucking easy, is I'm not gonna do most of that on here, I'm just gonna fry it. Uh, the potato croquette, croquette is basically just get make mashed potato, nice mashed potato, stick a bit of flour in it to thicken it up, freeze it, and then make it into the shapes you want, deep fry it in breadcrumbs. Fucking easy, you don't need me to show you that. Let's throw a little Ultra Death Mega Hot Sauce. Yeah, let's throw a little bit of that in the uh, in the eggs. Right, so chicken gizzards. Make sure they've got a really good coating of milk, and then it's going to be flour, egg, flour, fry, nice and easy. Yeah, we're going to do them in batches. So we'll do them in batches of like maybe half a dozen. So we'll just do flour, egg, flour, and then straight in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just gonna cook these till they go a nice golden brown. <sighs> Man, I love these fucking, this is why I only do the crime and nourishment episodes like once every few months, because like, yeah, ah! Like, remember the first one, like when Stanhope was just like, or one of the, one of the first ones, who was the first one? 
I can't even remember. Was it Mishka? It might have been Mishka. Whoever it was, they were just like, yeah, like, you know, ham sandwich and some some potato chips. You know, or you know, just just some jello with some with some fucking thousand dollar dressing on it. It's like, yeah, I could do that. Now, fucking four course fucking meals, you fucking wankers are trying to kill me. In. We'll keep that flour because we can use that for um, the just powdering our croquetten shortly. Uh, we'll keep the egg as well because we can use that too. The only other thing we're going to need for the croquetten is some breadcrumbs, which we have here. Oh. Okay, we still going. We're still winning. We're just waiting for Brett now. Right. The other thing, the, uh, these can go to one side for a minute. So, potato croquetting. Yeah. There we go. So, this is our potato slab, our frozen potato, that we've already made. We're just going to chop this up into croquette sized pieces. There we go. <laughs> Probably get like five out of this. That would do. One. There we go. Look at this go. Boom. There we go. Five. Perfect. Ugh. Right. Same again, egg flour breadcrumbs, sort of same again. So, this time, flour first. Give them a nice coating. Flour helps the egg to stick. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit, it seems a bit excited. Give them a nice good coating. Lovely. And then into the breadcrumbs. You can double dip this and do breadcrumb, breadcrumb again. We'll see how they coat. I think they look okay. So a nice breadcrumb layer. And then into the uh, oil. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Five croquetten. Ah, ah, ah. Anybody else into the habit of just saying ow, whether you're actually hurt or not? Just like, you know, you bang your arm, you ow, it's like, that didn't actually hurt. I don't know why I said ow. I think it comes from when you're a kid and you just like, act like everything's agony, just so, you know, you get more attention. I don't think I ever really got out of that stage in my life. Which I think has probably been obvious to everybody apart from me for the longest time ever. Our lovely croquetten. Take these out. I mean, they're just potato croquettes, basically. Uh, croquetten, I think, is just the German way of saying it. But you can also have them which they're full of like a ragu, kind of like a meat creamy thing instead, which looks really good. But, um,. I couldn't be bothered to fuck around with that today. Okay, so we have our croquetten. We have our uh, chicken gizzards. And we have our delicious looking etouffee. That's pretty much it all done. Um, I'm gonna go and put some stuff back in the fridge and freezer and uh, I'll be back when Brett is. Happy birthday to Jen Bell by the way. I don't know when her birthday is but she's been whinging about it recently so I assume it's sometime around now. So 
Happy birthday, Jen. Oh, and it's also... Whose else's birthday is it? Oh, Tommy Tomsky, um, comedian friend of mine. It's his birthday today as well. So happy birthday, Tommy. I'll see you soon. Love you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit scared when I saw how long your stream went on for yesterday and uh, how drunk you were when I popped my head in somewhere towards the middle of it that I thought you might not show up. I was never going to show up. Uh, you know, before you hit record, I told, uh, for everybody listening, I told Andy to scrap the entire episode because I found out what my final meal is going to be. It's going to be his fucking popsicle after last night's drunkenness. Yeah. So, well, and, and as, as I say, you know, that, that would, have, would have been great to know a week ago because I've just spent, you know, an hour deep frying shit and making fucking stew in like my boiling hot garage on the hottest day of the year in England. Oh, so, come that, on. It's just boiling hot grease. Oh, man. It's fucking warm. Right. Let's fucking see what we've got. Um, first thing, I'm going to pour out some of this etouffee. Um, I'm not even going to bother plating this stuff up because it feels, I mean, the, the etouffee, obviously, we will. Oh. So what we did is, um, you don't really get crawfish here in the UK, so I got these things called langoustines, which are like big, long scrimps with little pinches. So we did those. And um, obviously, you know, you know what's in, a, what's in an etouffee, but um, it's basically just a gumbo, right? Very, very close, very close. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously you'll have to watch the episode back to see exactly what's, you know, what's gone on with all of this stuff. But so I'll, um, let me bring this over so you can have a good look. So this is our crawdad etouffee. So we'll give this a, uh, a little taste. Mm. It was pretty fucking amazing. Better have a beer with that. Mm. Mum, I thought about getting a beer and then I realised I've got, but I drank them all last night. So, but because it's so hot, I've just literally been chugging fucking water <laughs> all day, trying to fucking rehydrate. And we have the master price chicken gizzards. The pinnacle. Yeah, which are absolutely amazing. I've, I've, I've got like, I bought way too many of them, so I've now got a shitload of them in the freezer. So I'm going to eat for the next few weeks. You know, <clears throat> they're kind of like beef jerky, almost. Like, you know, where beef jerky salted and cured, it'll last a long time. But kind of the same thought. You just kind of, depending on how you prep them and, Bowl them. You can uh, chew on them and think about life. Yeah, well, I did um, marinate them overnight in um, milk with a bit of vinegar because I couldn't find any buttercream, buttermilk. And then in the egg mixture, you know, when you're doing the egg and the breadcrumbs and stuff, put a load of really hot hot sauce in the egg mixture. Oh, yeah. So that's just making me sweat even more because these are spicy as fuck now. Um, and I'm going to bring one of these over to you so you can see. These are our uh, little potato croquettes, in, which in theory should be. Love it. Oh, love it. Nice and gooey. Love it. Mm. Dude, I want to be there right now. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Um, but yeah, man. That's your meal. Oh, I want to be there right Oh, my God. Like, take one of those gifts, like, take the, break apart the croquette. Yeah. 
Yeah, now take a chicken gizzard and dip it inside half of it. Oh, now see what that tastes like. A little chicken gizzard with a potato on it. A little creamy, mm. creamy chicken gizzard. Woo! A little etouffee taste, huh? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I've never had um, Rocky Mountain oysters before, but I imagine that they, consistency-wise, are very similar. Rocky Mountain oysters will nut in your mouth. Oh really? But no, my, my favorite thing about doing these episodes, these crime and nourishment episodes, is because it forces me completely out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And forces me to make something that I would never think of actually making, you know, on my own. Which is 100%. I mean, these guys are fucking like, I want to have like a load, I'm going to make a load of these up, sort of lightly fry them and then freeze them. So I can just take them out of the freezer, out of the freezer, stick them in the fryer, and then they're just done in a couple of minutes. Yeah, they're like little adult treats almost. <clears throat> yeah, but just like getting back from the pub, like wasted, and then just having a yeah. big bowl of these. Oh my god, am I that'd be amazing? Um, right, Brett. Where can people find you on Twitch? Well, last night you could find me drunk. If I was in front of the camera, at some point I, I don't remember much of it. I went to bed and left everything running, but I'm a Husky Boyo and on Twitch, and then I've got a little drop stuff on. I try to be like Andy Baker. Uh, Andy Baker, always a successful, fantastic YouTuber at Another Fat Guy Cooks. I also dump my little videos on YouTube every once in a while, Husky Boyo. Or, or, uh, <clears throat> that's about it. Twitch. Cool. Twitter. All those links will be down in the description. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you very much for uh, for joining me for this. Um, hopefully, we'll get this out tomorrow night, so we'll you'll see it tomorrow. So good, um, brother. Yeah, been an absolute pleasure, man. And um, take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Okay, bro. See you, Andy. Take care. Thanks. Okay, that was it. Brett Brock, crime and nourishment. Ah, oh, deep fried. Oh my god, these things are so fucking good. Seriously. Deep fried chicken gizzards, potato croquettes, shrimp etouffee. All fucking amazing. Big love to Brett Brock. All of his links will be down in the description. Check those out. Another fat guy's just cooked. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. I ain't gonna lie down. Another fat guy.